Today's edition of the Cowboys Report is presented by Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use promo code COWBOYS. Pretty simple, right? Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. New Year's is coming. Make sure it's not just the day that's doing that. Get some men's grooming products. Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. A lot coming up here. We'll condense it down to coaching rumors. There's quite a bit there. The Odell Beckham saga and overall wide receiver conversation. We'll also spend some time on what exactly the Cowboys plan to do at cornerback after the most recent game against Philadelphia. But we're going to begin with the Sean Payton rumors once again, because of course they're not there. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, once again linking the Cowboys and Sean Payton. I would push back on this being they've resurfaced or it's back. It never actually left. It kind of cooled down because we knew what was going on. There's no reason to talk about it. If the Cowboys go one and done again in the playoffs this year, the calls to fire McCarthy and bring in the guy Jerry Jones has coveted for a long time in Sean Payton are going to be back. And this rumor hasn't stopped. It's just been there. We just haven't talked about it because the Cowboys have been successful. They've been winning a bunch of games this year, so you're not going to fire Mike midseason. You just need playoff success finally in 2023, or at least the 2023 calendar year, 2022-23 season. Here's what Mike Florio reported. Yes, the chatter is back. If the Cowboys finish with, say, a one-and-done postseason, the thinking is that owner Jerry Jones would potentially pull the trigger finally on hiring Sean Payton. Now, that's not really anything new. That's been the theory, I'll call it, for a very long time now. If the Cowboys go one-and-done, I'm firing McCarthy. I, I, he is a better coach than Jason Garrett. I don't even think McCarthy's a bottom half coach in the NFL. But I do think you'd have a better one potentially in Sean Payton. And if you can't close in the postseason again, probably because he came out flat again and we'll blame the coaching, unless something weird happens in that game where it's like, okay, maybe it's not Mike's fault, I would probably fire McCarthy. Because I'm, I'm not going to go through another long period, just like the Romo era of, ah, we're close, and then you can't quite close it out in the postseason. Don't make the same mistake you made with Garrett again by giving him too much of a, of a leash. Now, I am worried about the hypothetical trade compensation for Sean Payton. He is under contract with the Saints. He'd have to trade for him. I don't think it would be a first-round pick, but who knows? Maybe Jerry wants to do the Saints owner, Gail Benson, a solid. You never know in the end, right? I would not want to move my first-round pick for a coach. I, I don't think that's worth it in the end for the Cowboys. If you do trade it, you better make sure you get everything going quickly. There are other head coaching jobs open as it relates to Sean Payton and potentially Dan Quinn, which we'll get to here in, in a little bit, by the way. The Panthers job is open. I don't see that very much as, a, as an appealing job. I don't see the Colts job as an appealing job either because they're not in great shape quarterback-wise or draft pick-wise. Like, I don't think that's a great fit. Denver a year ago made sense, but now Russell Wilson is cooked. He's getting roasted by Patrick Starr, like, he should probably retire at that point. If I were Sean Payton, I wouldn't want the Denver job. I have my eyes on maybe the Cardinals job, the Chargers if it comes open, the Dallas job as well. So pick a head coach. MM for Mike McCarthy, SP for Sean Payton, DQ for Dan Quinn, O for other. Now the one thing you might worry about for the Cowboys side is how much control does Sean Payton want? That might not be an issue with Dan Quinn. More on him in a second, but if the ad break comes here on YouTube, Take advantage of it. Head down to the pinned comment and let me know which head coach you want in 2023. Let's talk Dan Quinn, who I was convinced last year, and I think and Quinn's camp thought as well, that he was going to be the next head coach of the Denver Broncos. He was tight with George Payton, or uh, Payton, their GM, and they ended up going with Nathaniel Hackett to unmitigated disaster. You got Randy Gregory getting in fights along the sideline. The players were getting in fights with themselves. Like, it was a mess under Hackett. He was fired today, and Dan Quinn's name is once again emerged as a potential candidate for this job. Quinn will be among the most popular head coach targets, I'd say D'Amico Ryan's maybe right alongside if not above Quinn there, because the defense kind of cooling off for Dallas. Latest report from Josina Anderson is that Brian Schottenheimer, currently on the Cowboys staff in the analyst role, could be the OC for Quinn, which, of course, Russell Wilson knows them both well for Seattle. I think last year, Quinn would have taken the job had he, had he been able to get it. He did not get it. Yeah, he passed on other jobs, not the Denver one. But now the Denver job doesn't seem as uh, 
intriguing in terms of is this the job you want? Because your GM might get fired a year from now, and then you got to you're hitching your your courses to Russ, who can't cook anymore. It's I don't know if that's the job Dan Quinn wants now. So how worried are you about losing Dan Quinn? Scale this only from one to ten, not even spe specifically the Denver Broncos job, but just a job in general. Sound off in the comment section right now. One to ten is your scale. 2023 is on its way, and the last thing you want to be is the guy with pubes getting in your way, making it your best year yet. Get some Manscaped products, 20% off and free shipping on all their products at manscaped.com. Use promo code COWBOYS. This new year, shave the loose pines off wood with the best tool for the job. That is the Lawn Mower 4.0. You can get the performance package. They've offered cologne now, body wash too. 2023 is on its way. Make sure you're smelling, looking, and feeling the best possible. Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. 20% off and free shipping. It's Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Let's move once again, maybe for the last time, for now at least, to Odell Beckham. As I know many of you, and myself included, have kind of been out on the whole Odell Beckham situation for weeks now. Kind of sounds like Dr. Jerry is now at that point as well. Uh, Jones saying it just doesn't seem very realistic. Now, he didn't close the deal on 2023, the door, I should say, which... I mean, maybe he's in a huge surprise. Here's what Jerry said post-game. Quote, it's not realistic to think about having him in any meaningful way for the playoffs. That's not dismissing it in the future, but it is dismissing, for the most part, the reality of him getting in here and helping us in the playoffs. So I think in reality we can ignore the Odell Beckham conversation until the offseason when I'm sure it will once again reemerge. But, hey, T.Y. Hilton made a play that... I don't think Gallup or Noah Brown is making this year, just outrunning everybody downfield for the 52-yard bomb. The speed is still there for T.Y. So, yes, uh, I don't feel the need to get on board with adding Odell Beckham anymore. I hope Gallup can get a little bit better. And if Brown Hilton can rotate as your threes and Lamb continues to be Lamb, I'm on board with that. that I think, I think, is enough. Speaking of Lamb... All aboard the hype train, baby. We were hoping he'd be emerging as the number one wide receiver. He'd had some good games with some mental lapses, some mistakes, some drops, some wrong routes. He has played multiple clean games in a row and is having his best season ever. He has emerged, as far as I'm concerned, as a legitimate wide receiver one. 91 catches this year, already past the 1,200-yard mark, and has eight touchdowns on the season. This production for CeeDee Lamb, relative to his other seasons, he has already set career highs in everything. Catches, yards, targets, touchdowns, yards per game blowing by it. Not quite there, yards per target, uh, although he's not that far behind. He's a pro bowler again. He has fully arrived. The guy that we all thought he was going to be is here. I remember when the Cowboys took Lamb and Diggs in that awesome draft class. There, there were some misses in there. You know, Neville Gallimore hasn't been great, unfortunately, but be honest, it's been a nice piece for you. And I said, if this draft class is a bust, you you can blame me because I love that it was my favorite draft class the Cowboys have really ever put together in the moment. Well, you nailed the first two picks. You got a Pro Bowl, borderline All-Pro, wide receiver, and a cornerback. Do you agree with me that CeeDee Lamb is now a true wide receiver one? Not a 1A, not a 1B, a full-fledged one. Why for yes and for no, go vote in the comments section. Let's talk to Sean right now. What's the status of him moving forward? I was pleasantly surprised with the play of Deshaun Wright. To be fair, the bar was be better than Kelvin Joseph, and that's a very low bar to try to clear. I think the Cowboys got it out of Deshaun Wright. Deron Bland, I like him in the nickel. He does give up some plays, but he's also making a lot of plays to where I think it's totally fine with me. Uh, in just the, the, the trade-off you're making there. A lot, of, a lot of takeaways. Deshaun Wright was not perfect against Philadelphia, but five catches, 35 yards, and a pass breakup, I'll take it. Uh, a lot of short area stuff, a nice PBU. Didn't get cooked a ton downfield. I thought he was better than what we've seen from Calvin Joseph. Uh, easy matchup this week and a more challenging if he plays next week against, or two weeks from now against the Commanders. But I thought Deshaun Wright, Played pretty well. Uh, Expectations-wise, I thought he exceeded them. They were low, of course. I'm still worried about cornerback, too. 
But I would give Nashawn Wright a start. I would ride with Diggs, Bland, and Wright. You can let Joseph operate the nickel and give Trayvon Mullen more time to get up to speed. So with that in mind, cornerback three. NW for Nashawn Wright. MA for Mackenzie Alexander, who was the nickel the Cowboys used sparingly this past week. KJ for Kelvin Joseph. TM for Trayvon Mullen. One note, by the way, on Duran, or Duran Bland, targeted nine times, six catches, 67 yards. Did allow a TD, had a great interception, though. Uh, in general, nickel corners, where Bland still spent most of his time. He did, he did get some outside cornerback reps, though, when Mackenzie Alexander was in there at the nickel. Uh, but I think you're going to try to maximize your best three. I think Wright's better than Alexander right now, so I'd keep Bland at the nickel. And when you're in your base and only two corners, it's Bland out there anyway, so it's fine. I thought, I thought he played pretty well. Uh, he's been a, a great surprise for Dallas. Not perfect, but for a, a late-round rookie, everything you wanted and more. I have been thrilled with the way Bland has played. He's been if, – if, 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 let, let me put it this way. If I put Kelvin Joseph's name over the way Bland has played, we'd all be thrilled. We should be super-duper thrilled that it's a late-round pick in Bland. If you have not already, make sure you guys are subscribed. Free videos every single day right here on the Cowboys Report news, rumors, whatever it is, we have you guys covered. One more note before we go. Uh, I think it's a lucky moment here. This was Sam Williams' car after his car crash the other day. Now, he's fine. He's actually out of concussion protocol, which is good news there. And I think that's an example of the car looking worse than the accident actually was. But, I mean, it's totaled. He said he got the car the day before. He, he said he was happy to, to be alive there. Like, I am... Um, happy that Sam Williams is okay because that could have been a hell of a lot worse so I'm glad he's okay.